I always say, you gotta get it while the getting is good. The pace of today's world is insane. Anything can always happen at any moment. Life is as spontaneous as you let it be, and I'm a pearl in a shell amidst an ocean of unlimited opportunity. The world is my oyster. So here I am in Times Square, New Year's Eve going into 2020, and I'm so excited. All these people are strangers to me. I've only known one way of living my whole life, and that's in the pursuit of freedom, and thus I gravitate towards things that are free. The company of friends and strangers alike never cost me much of anything either. When you pursue freedom and share love with the world, the world shares back. Cheers to 2020! Good night, Times Square! Yes, you are. Yes, you are. All right, Evan. See you next year. What's up, my man? That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, oh no, let me do. We do. Hi, Mr. Mike. Happy to see you. Hello, Happy hello, Year. sir. Happy New Year to you. It is a joy to have you here. Thank you. We are, we are the United States. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Nice. How about a hug? I may not know much about infectious disease or global economics, but what I do know and can speak extensively on is the nature of freedom. I need to step up my game because this code is fucking epic. It is epic. epic. That's how I do it. For my entire adult life, this is all I've ever known. If you want to get things done, you need to be whatever you have to be at that time. I am whatever is required of me. The opportunity to capture the rawness of people and their basic humanity right now is so rare and unprecedented, it's compelling. It reminds me of how I feel if I haven't played the piano in a few months or left the country in a few years. In the case of 2020, I know of people who haven't left their homes in nearly a year. I love David so much. I've known him since he was a young child, as his mom recognized his prodigy and brought him to me for music training. Now, I admire him, as he's taken his skills to places I never could have guided him to. I'm so proud of you, David. Sometimes I tell him he plays too many notes, but that's just because I have a hard time keeping up. So two days ago, I met this girl, Melina. She had never wrote or sung an original song in her life to this point, and I'm going to put her on the main stage in just four days. Fortunately, she's trusted me and the things I told her about the creative process. I told her others would be joining us along the way in support with open minds and hearts, so away we went. At first sight, I knew she embodied the essence of innocence and purity. I was looking for a girl with a dream to sing. Here she is. Hope, unity, and resilience. This is America. And here comes the Calvary.
One of the individual artist's most essential responsibilities is to guard the spark. That point of inception and total clarity of what it is you are meant to create. Tonight's fire is going to be a little bit bigger than last night's fire. Last night was just a little stick fire. You know? Tonight's going to be awesome. I'm setting up a board. Uh, we're about to record the jazz quartet. So, drums, bass, keys, sax, I think that's what it is. <laughs> Hello, hello. How do you sir? Do you, how do you? Doing all right, man. Good to see you. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed. The creative process is a living entity, a life force like all other elements in nature. It does not know or see color or race in people. Human beings, of course, we do see color and race. We're human beings with eyes to see and help us identify and acknowledge things like culture, danger, beauty, and attraction. When people say, I don't see color, it immediately allows me to understand one thing above all about that person, that they are either blind or that they are a liar. And with that distinction, who gives a shit what color their skin is? What else don't you see? Fire? It'd be like, dude, you need to evacuate this area right now. It's on fire. Nah, I don't see fire. It just looks like everything else to me. Come on. And it's not like you need to fear fire, but you sure as hell better acknowledge it. My costume, as you'll see on the 10th, is fire and I know it well People's capacities are not unlimited. Professions like teachers and nurses before 2020 were already being stretched to their limits. It's a multitask world we live in. Performers and artists though, who usually find themselves in great need of support to begin with, have simply become footnotes. We're non-essential. That is until we're not there for extended amounts of time, then all of a sudden, the world feels like a barren landscape of sterility.
Sorry, Amy. Oh, let's see if that did anything. Hello. I can't. I can't hear you. I, I think this is a butt dial. Okay. It's all fucked up. That's why I'm asking. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it's like gonna break. So. Yeah, that's okay. It'll be fine. So, Anthony, we're gonna be right there on that log. Okay. Um. Matt, you need to get much closer to the fire, like considerably closer, right next to the log. Okay. Yep. Rachel. I've known Matt about half my life. I'll call him on a Monday and be like, you ever listen to Dark Side of the Moon? And he'll be like, nah, never really got into Pink Floyd. And I say, well, we're performing it live this Friday, so take a listen. And then we just go do it. Matt wrote this song earlier that day, and it's everyone's first time hearing it. Try it again. What a beautiful message, Matt. So what do you have to say? Yeah, you, watching. What's the most important thing you wish to convey to the world? Write that thing down and say it out loud every day to everyone you know, or just to yourself while lying quietly in bed, and that thing will be real. down on me let your heart be light set spirit free and when the darkness comes to take your life lay your burden down it'll be all right when you keep secrets pain, dreams, and wishes alike inside your mind, it's one of the most selfish things you can ever do. Don't be selfish. Every single tiny little scrap surrounding a fire wants to be consumed by the fire. So do your part and throw it in. Empty your pockets into the fire. You got more to lose if you don't than if you do. Okay, so this is where I've been living the past five years. In a huge mansion with a thousand feet of private shoreline on 14 acres within five miles of a major downtown metropolis. It's affectionately called Katewood. 
and it costs me next to nothing. No, it's not family money or money at all. It's the development of a relationship I cultivated with a good man. I travel about two to three months per year gathering spiritual energy, mostly in the US because it's free to move around and I can fit in anywhere at any time. And not just anywhere in the US, but all the best places, spending time seeking the best people and the best that this country has to offer. About 10 years of my life has been spent solo traveling, learning how to coexist with all the elements of this earth and everything on it, both good and bad. My favorite element is fire. Once again, free, anywhere, anytime. Dreadlock Dave is someone I've been meaning to work with for a long time now. We're friends, and he's here as a musical anchor. When I got him involved just two days prior to this, I asked him, what song in your vast arsenal of original music can you bring to the table that aligns with the message of how crazy 2020 has been so far? And here you have it a first time impromptu jam of that song, mixed in with a dance rehearsal. It's the day before the big day, and we're getting it together. That's how you get things done. That's how you inspire things. Like just share the love. That's it. You just share the beauty. And then it just, this is one of those times of life right now. This is one of those times of life. Everybody involved in this project, their lives are about to change in some way as a direct result of what's gonna happen in the next couple days. Anthony's New Year's resolution was to write his first song. Once he said it out loud, it began to become real. Here's our first time hearing it. Now this is a fast rap that I just made up. I just, I just made this up at 4.30 last night, so if I trip over my tongue, you'll forgive me. All right. <clears throat> That's okay. Yesterday afternoon, what 
It all occurred to me I'd like to be hand in hand with you. Everybody needs a reason to believe in themselves, and everybody needs a little motivational help. Sometimes the life is only what you make it. Won't you let me hear you say it? So I'm telling the story of everyone else's story. My role, as you'll clearly see on the 10th, is to set the stage, create the space, lace it with love, and lead the parade. People say Anthony looks like every member of the Rolling Stones combined into one. The people I've chosen to surround myself with are musically influenced by the likes of the Grateful Dead, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, funk, gospel, and jazz. I dare anyone to live truly free. Life is a precious and fleeting gift. Know it. Own it and shake off the doubt which holds you and the rest of us back from creating a world we all want to live in. Where we can all thrive and all of our dreams can come alive. finds a way. Even when it seems like it doesn't, it just might take a little longer than we want. And sure as the sun rises came the moment of truth, the day of. No actors, no script, just life in the moment. This is what it's like being an artist, doing what you gotta do. Nobody telling you where, when, or how. Nobody out here carrying around my gear. No permission and no regrets. Nobody told me to make a movie, and I don't even know if anybody's going to watch it. But that's not why you do it. Being an artist is a lifestyle, and it can be hard work, but it doesn't have to feel like work. Trust me, this was hard to pull off, but I wouldn't change a thing. Welcome to 1010 2020. I can't see you. 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 I can't 
told him Halloween costumes. We're gonna do the matching like uh, black and white with the checker. And if he doesn't have a costume, I need some <laughs> Soft music going, and then once the costume parade gets back, yeah. then it's just you. Forty-five minutes of whatever you feel like playing. I'm excited to see the performers. Yeah. No. It's, it's super exciting. The and stations are, yeah, it's super exciting. And this is like her, what, second Halloween party? Yeah. Your wife? Yeah. I'm not a Halloween person. I oh. love Halloween. Wow. I think it was just a little. I like the. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to call that. Aesthetic? <laughs> the scars and the. <laughs> Five minutes till the parade begins. Wait, I'm putting this right in the You look at it. But apparently there's like the per Mike said there's a parade happening in a minute. To the parade. Well, my favorite part of the event so far is getting to enjoy the outdoors on a beautiful day. Uh, a lot of interesting costumes. I, you know, obviously as a uh, as an artistic person, Halloween is the most fun event of the year. Getting to express your creativity, and then the performance art aspect. I mean, we've got painters, we've got fire people, we've got musicians. It's everything all in one spot. Ready to go on the costume parade. This is a fucking costume parade, isn't it? Yeah. All right, check this out. This way. I think I think everyone like everyone basically doesn't know each other. We're all fucking new people, yeah. and we're just going on the strength of like, yo, I like your costume. So like, and yeah. trying try, try to build yeah. off of that. Like, yeah. so yeah. Every, everyone is at, on, on the same level, right. to where to where, like we don't know who anyone is, and then and we can just build off of that. You know? yeah. Okay, I feel like Great Gatsby vibes, yeah. but like we don't have to get all dressed up. We can actually look like whoever we want to look like. It feels like it's you almost know? like as if like COVID never happened, you know? Yeah. Everyone's having a good time, chilling, kicking it, and building as if like there's no pandemic happening. Yeah, right, 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 right. For sure. We're a COVID couple. Yeah, we started dating right before COVID. There you go. And we're getting married. Oh my yeah. God. That's right. Congratulations. A COVID couple, 
I introduced them years ago. They split and then really fell in love the second time around. And now I'm about to marry them. You see, there is such a thing as second chances when it comes to love. From this moment on, it is up to you, my friend. And it is up to you, my dear friend. And it is up to all of you how you treat each other. Every single breath you take affects every other breath you take from that moment after. You are amazing, both of you. Everything you do is worth the world and you make a difference. Do you have anything you'd like to say to each other? I just wanna say I love you, Joe. Do you have anything you'd like to say to Jillian? It's gonna be a great life. You may kiss the bride. That's uh So this was stop number two on what was supposed to be a mobile jazz band, recurring seven times throughout the night. Like, pack up all their gear, set it all back up, and reappear like magic as the parade would pass by. This element had to be sacrificed after this, though, due to Mother Nature's gift of sparkling rain, which was a worthy trade. Thank you again, Mother Nature. Sorry, jazz band. It's a pretty different experience. I mean, uh, all these eccentric people coming together, um, dressed up in crazy costumes, uh, watching all these performances. Each performance is so unique. Everyone, everyone's got something different to offer. There's live musicians, the wedding, the acrobats, fire spinners. Um, yeah, there's everything. Sometimes my work as an artist and collaborator is hard to understand. It involves inspiring and motivating groups of people to mobilize their efforts into greater collective goals. Those in the shadows are often me, the unaccounted for, the strugglers, and the keepers of the pockets full of dreams. This is a live movie, one take. 10 seconds, five seconds, action. I would say so. Bonding with individuals in need of love and hope infuses yourself with the same. Something as simple as holding someone's hand and staring directly into their eyes can make such a difference. Whenever you step up and pitch in, even the simplest of actions can have ripple effects through your entire life and the lives of others. It's always easier to walk away and turn a blind eye than to hold someone up in need. But stopping to give your time to anyone in need can not only help that person, but also offer back the elusive gift of the embodiment of selfless love. It 
is only by helping others that we truly learn how to help ourselves. This has a special name known as the Golden Rule. COVID has affected my life in that it is keeping me from visiting my wife's daughter in Australia. And I have missed out on emceeing one Air Force promotion ceremony and narrating three retirement ceremonies. I realize other people are having trouble putting food on the table and losing jobs and things, but that's how it's affected me, lack of travel. COVID uh, has like killed my career, basically. I've been a full-time musician for 30 years, and uh, it's, um, it's put the kibosh on just about all my gigs, my teaching, uh, sessions, and everything. So it's been a real hardship. COVID has affected my life in so many ways. Um, I feel very grateful that it hasn't affected me in a, as badly as it has some. Um, but I do have a house cleaning business called Environments here in Cleveland. And so during quarantine, when things were shutting down, even though we were considered an essential business, um, a lot of people didn't want us to come over to their house to clean. So it, it affected my business. I lost my staff. Um, so I'm rebuilding from that right now. Man, it's been a whirlwind. So I play in a band in Pittsburgh, so we've been basically shut down. Uh, we used to do weekly bluegrass jams at the Park House every Wednesday night. We had This would have been our 10th year of doing it, 10 years in a row, every wow. Wednesday night. And we basically got shut down at the beginning of the year and haven't done one since. Uh, only played, every, like, practiced a little bit, but uh, I've been working 100% remote. I've been living in Ohio now. I gave up my apartment in Pittsburgh because there's like my job is basically 100% remote. The band is kaput at this point. So we're hoping by uh, spring or something next year we'll be able to get started again. So as a college student, it's all everything's online. Everything's we just moved out of campus about a, less than a month ago. Yeah. So it's really affecting how my normal college experience is trying to find friends and like trying to be able to study online is a lot more difficult and I'm finding like I'm having to change my life in different ways than I was expecting to. I mean he also does cheer in college. Um, we both do like partner acrobatics like cheer singing. So like COVID is literally like it put everything to a standstill. I mean it's, it's definitely put a damper on things because I originally had a job lined up for for the summer, and that COVID ended up canceling that job. So I really, I really didn't have a direction in my life. I really wasn't sure like where it was going for the most part. But uh, like eventually, I found a job and I found a way to get it going. But in the meantime, like during quarantine, it's life just kind of moves pretty slow. It's it's kind of boring, and so like a lot of the times, I was like, I wish I could do something, but like I knew I can't because like it's responsible to like stay in where like be safe quarantine yourself so uh it's definitely put a damper on my life but I, I i found ways to enjoy myself and to really get out there put myself like out there and just kind of enjoy life as safely and you know socially distance as possible it's affected my life by having my my travels at home um this year was going to be my my time to shine to travel do what I need to do, but uh, it, it gave me perspective to even slow down more. Slow down more and, and just live every moment to your best. Uh, COVID has affected me. Number one, I have a business, so I had to shut down. So it's affected me financially. It has affected me uh, mentally, um, obviously, because of not being able to have a quality of life. Um, it has affected me being in a country that I don't know what the truth is, and I'm trying to decipher through. It 
information I receive to understand and make my own decision of what I think is truthful, what's factual, and what is something that has a hidden agenda. So that's been very confusing to me. Whatever day it was, I think it was a Sunday, maybe the 14th, 15th, 13th, or whatever month that happened. I went to work, I worked at two breweries, and it was... I mean, I went in and it was adjusted and everything was like supposed to be safe and practical and all that. And then we were watching the news and it was, it, I will say it was kind of somber because it was pretty dead. No one wanted to go out at that point. And then we saw that everything was shut down. So getting that shutdown point, I don't know if anyone works in the restaurant industry, but I'm a bartender. And that we have a saying where we say when you're out of something, you're 86. It's 86. So when you, when we got shut down, it sucked. And we, my manager on duty that night, she said, poured us up a shot of Jaeger. Well, I got a shot of Jaeger. I don't know what anyone else got. I did Jaeger. Makers, if you watch it, you must shit still, you must jam. Anyways, so we did, we 86 the brewery. We 86 the employees, we went home, and it was a long night of drinking. It's, it's been a change. Um, usually we're going, 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 going all the time with like gigs and just trying to keep track of what we're doing and the next thing, and now it's like, you've had more time to like connect with more people and just like reassess what you really want and what's more important in life. We went down the, we, went, we shut down the performing when COVID first hit, so our busy season starts in March. Um, and then we just concentrated on donating and sewing masks for every which way we could possibly do, because that's where people needed us. We still need to bring the smiles, we still need to bring people to be happy and healthy for next year. Uh, so I am mainly a full-time choreographer. Um, so with this whole pandemic, it's like people are kind of forced to uh, prioritize, you know, where, where they invest their, their time and their money and what they feel is safe and what's not safe. Um, so outside of, you know, being able to adapt and do online classes with the studio, um, a lot of people are looking to book performances and things like that because there's either regulations so we can't do that now or there is not as much of a demand because people aren't prioritizing their money and their time that way so it's been really difficult to uh, make like a steady income being an entertainer this year uh, but I will say that uh, especially the beginning of the pandemic it like it really showed me how fast the world was moving and when it completely stopped it really showed you like that we needed to kind of take a break for a minute. And like a brief minute, like it was a lot longer of a minute than I wished it was. Uh, but it, it made me realize like that we were kind of working ourselves to death and, and you know, we needed to find like a happy medium. You know? Um, it, it had a big uh, impact on me. I like started like with a full-time job, but then I ended up getting laid off and I was going to do like stuff that I do here, like finally, like I was working towards doing projections and stuff like that. And I was like finally getting a career job where I can just focus on doing that. Because mm -hmm. before then it was like just a balancing act of like right. doing like a part-time job to pay the bills and then freelance to right. fill in the rest of the time. Sure. But all this is just like snowballed. And then like I was able to like build up some uh, like substantial success, I guess, with it. Just uh, I mean, it turned into quite so much ever since starting out as a hobby. And I, uh, yeah, so I've just been trying to spend this time getting better at that. Just trying to use this time wisely instead of just, like, waiting for something to open back up to me. It's like, well, I could just, like, sit here and pout the whole time or I can, like, use this time to, like, actually get to work and, like, learn things that I've been trying to pick up for, like, years now, but I never really had the time to do it for because I was busy with all the other stuff. Hectic. It's it's hard to find materials. I'm a contractor, so I materials material sourcing has gotten difficult. But other than that, I've I've been busier than ever. Everyone sits at home and they, they want something done. They want to make their house beautiful. So yep. Um. So I own a cold pole Cleveland. It's a pole fitness studio in downtown Cleveland. And we 
to close for two months, so that really sucked. Um, I had to stay at home and teach virtual classes, which wasn't the same, and like teaching is the thing that keeps me balanced. So the fact that I couldn't see any of my students except through a computer screen was like a major bummer, but besides that, like, it's mostly the transition between like, it feels like a big world tonal shift, you know what I mean? Like, suddenly the world feels so like uncertain and everyone's features are like up in the air. So I've had to deal with a lot of like mental health problems, just like I feel like everyone has. So, but besides that, my studio was pretty affected. But I mean, we rebounded and we're doing really well now. So I'm hoping like that momentum keeps going. In life, there's a beginning and an end, very much like this string. A beginning and an end. But it's not about the beginning or the end, it's about what happens in the middle and how we live our life. See, this year may have looked a little different. Maybe it was harder to, to be with friends and family. Maybe, maybe work looked a little different. There were good times, there were bad times. And when all these things come together, when all these things come together, you see, that's not the magic part. The magic part is when all these things come together, it becomes hard to manage by ourselves. We have to stick together. See, that's the magic part. Because you're not in it alone. In fact, we're all in this. Together. And together we march on. Hopefully learning along the way a thing or two about how to transcend time and manifest something called enlightenment. Because in a timeless space and dimension, manifestation of who you are meant to become happens fast. When we find that space in between thought and time, we can fill it with powerful intention, which leads to the realization of the reality of your will. This was never a party. It was always a movie. But I couldn't tell anyone that. It was a trick. So I started doing magic when I was just seven years old. Excuse me real quick, thank you so much. I got a magic kit when I was just seven years old. It was a little box about this big. Had a deck of cards, magic wall on top, had nothing too crazy. And then over the years, my magic grew and grew, and I performed all over the country. Big stage illusion shows where I saw my sits in half, make them float and make them disappear. Hey, real quick, guys, before we get, get the show going, see, magic, it takes a lot of, a lot of imagination. Do you guys have a lot of imagination? Let me hear you say, yeah? yeah. For the next little bit of time that we're together, I ask you guys for a favor. We're going to forget about how people and things interact, and we're going to suspend reality. Can you guys do that for me? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. We're going to get started with a little game, a little game of Pictionary. A little game of Pictionary. Do you guys know what Pictionary is? Yeah. Right? It's where I draw something and you guys guess what it is. We're going to start off easy. Here we go. I'm not much of an artist. Oh, I think I heard it out there. A bowling ball. A bowling ball. There you go. You won. Congratulations. You get... Uh, I don't know. A bowling ball. I told you. <laughs> I told you I'm not much of an artist. I do apologize. See, magicians, we play this a little differently, though. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll clap for myself. That's okay, too. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. I need a calculator and I need some help from the audience. Hi, ma'am, what's your... I think I have the, the light on, don't I? Ma'am, what's your name? What was that, nice and loud? Carrie? Carrie, I'm going to grab my calculator. Carrie, I want you to name a two-digit number that is significant to you. 57. 57 times. Let's go. Hi, ma'am, what's your name? Sam. Sam. Sam, name a two-digit number significant to you. 12. 12 times. Let's multiply it. Sure. 
Seven times. Excellent. Sir. Thirteen. Thirteen. Times. I got it. I need uh, let's go two more. Uh, yes, in the in the in the mask there. Actually we're all wearing masks, huh? Eleven. Eleven. Excellent. Times. Let's go one more. Twenty-two. Times. Twenty-two. Perfect. Equals. I got a really long number. Hi. Can you step right over here? What was your name again? Carrie. You forgot Carrie. Carrie, can you hold this? Can you hold my phone? Don't hit clear yet. You forgot Got it? Part of the costume. Carrie. I want you to... Carrie, read that number nice and loud so everyone can hear it. Everyone nice and quiet so Carrie can hear it. Wait, wait, one, one number at a time. One. One. Zero. Zero. One. One. Zero. Zero. Two. Two. Zero. Zero. Eight. Eight. Four. Four. Six. Six. Thank you. Carrie, let's give Carrie a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. <laughs> Carrie, you can head back to your seat in the audience or stand. Perfect, perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, so what we did, we took significant numbers from about six of us. We multiplied them together to get this crazy long number. This 101020846. Is this significant to anyone in the audience? No. No, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, in fact, it is significant to all of us. You see, magic is all about creating moments together. Like when I cracked that egg, that was a moment that we shared together. And if we look at this number a little carefully, 10, what month is it? October, that's 10th. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the 10th. The year is 20. And if you look at your phones or watches right now, ladies and gentlemen, it is 8, 40, 6. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Did you guys have a good time? My name's David Anthony. Have a great rest of the night, guys. Take care. Thank you. Good job, my sir. Nice, sir. You don't accept that. You embrace it. It's made us uh, adjust more and uh, kind of act more on a survival type mode. Try to make the most of it, you know? Um, just try to look at silver linings, restructure my life a little bit. I have more time to do my creative pursuits. Uh, I'm not so enmeshed in the day-to-day. -day. Yeah, yeah. Adapting to your surroundings, no matter what they are, and making the best out of that situation. Correct. And I think I made the best. I feel like we have to think about like what actually really matters. I think everyone had a reevaluation yeah. of things as far as like family, friends, like work. So I mean for me it's like I quit my whole job because like I, I don't want to work for I don't want to work for someone for the rest of my life. So and we don't know tomorrow's not promised today so I might as well go full force into uh, myself. Mayhem. Here's a quote from the movie Inception. An idea is like a virus, resilient and highly contagious. Even the smallest seed can grow to define or destroy you. When you're in the flow, not even the rain can catch you when you fall. But with even a hint of doubt, it can grow to infect you from the inside out. Think zombies. Sometimes it can feel like you have no control over your freedom, like something has invaded you. Be it a war, oppression, or a virus. In those times, you find little choice but to relinquish your power. For once it's upon you, you become a puppet, 
enslaved by circumstance. A virus depends on the organisms they infect for their survival. They die just like everything else. They're not actually living until they find something to hijack. They don't breathe or eat or grow, only infect and kill. Again, this is a live movie. I announced leading into this station that anybody that had a skill, big or small, bring it to the table. Life is like a movie on fire. And try to stop fire with fear and you'll be reduced to ashes. It's always been the same plague. You think we would have figured it out by now? We're doing real good on time, don't you think? Quiet! Quiet at six! The first step to solving any problem is recognizing there is one and approaching it with humility. Yet we beat our heads against the wall over and over, imposing our will upon others, ignoring blindly the unlimited potential of true equality and the notion 
of one world. Eradication should be a very familiar word and welcome to humanity by now. We've cured many deadly viruses throughout history, but we just can't seem to collectively find a cure for the worst one. Racism. Racism is like an ongoing civil war that has to rip people apart before uniting them. Epic clashes occur between the infected cells until one of the 380 trillion molecules figures it out and heals the body. Sometimes a virus comes along that spreads so fast beyond a cure and that should be a death marked at least in part by failure to react, malicious neglect, and active carelessness. Supposed to be one of the performers here tonight, having a demonic barker, you know, kind of circus freak act. But after I caught it, I felt kind of weary. I'm like, I don't know if I feel comfortable having a troop of six to nine performers under me at a public event. Like, you're always willing to sacrifice yourself, but other people, it's always a bit sketchy. Not getting to see my friends as much um, was tough, but I think it ultimately taught me to value the relationships and friendships I have a lot more. Um, it did. Everything started to shut down. The universe was like, no, Lola, get back into hibernation. Hide yourself from the world. And I got really dark for a while. Honestly, I was seriously depressed for at least, I mean, thankfully only two weeks. And then I tried to make the most of it, you know, um, just try to look at silver linings, restructure my life a little bit. And um, I got to spend a lot of time with my sister who lives with me. And my boyfriend came over a lot. So, you know, it was just, I tried to, tried to look for the silver linings. But honestly, it sucks. It impacted my life. I want to be out doing fun things and I'm just ready for it to be over. Kind of a rude awakening. It kind of, it kind of gave you a moment to like step back and realize what's going on around, around you, you know what I mean? Like not only just business or work, but just like family, health, friends, your, your, your mental state, you know what I mean? So it's, you just become more conscious about what's going on around you, you know what I mean? Our friend invited us. To be fair, we were very nervous because we've been um, so isolated. <laughs> And so this was our biggest step out, and we knew coming here that if it didn't feel comfortable, we would just dip and leave. But it's actually very, it's all just very distant and comfortable, so we're very grateful put for that. Put together very well. It's been yeah. put together very well. We'll play by the rules, fine. But I think we all see behind the mask. Hey. Hey. You're gonna have to yell even louder. Come on, guys. Currently, the 
The entertainment world seems like it's dreaming of a return to glory like we all once knew it. Some even took it for granted. The big dreamers dreamt of selling out a world tour. Now we just want to take the stage anywhere. This entire event is more of a hybrid, a reimagination of what can be now. The future may end up looking a lot like the past, who knows? But this is right now, where the past and the future both hold their breath and marvel in envy. It is only once, and it is forever. And look like Hulkamania is getting powerful. Sex oh, by the hour is when two universes collide. Ooh, ooh. Like these two guys right here. Oh, the two universes collide. The superpowers. The superpowers. They I can't cannot do it. I can't, oh, I can't oh, shake hands. I can't do it. Social distancing. It's not only because of the, the, the coronavirus, but it's because we don't the want these powers to come together even more and have the most explosive. Explosive. Hang out with your brothers and stay safe. Hey, you know what? Not only hang out with your oh, brothers, yeah. but there are there are two, there are three things in the world. One, the Lord Almighty, He created all of this. Two, take your vitamins. Three, you haven't seen these 24-inch pythons, this 34-inch neck, and this 64-inch chest come into your house until you see Hulkamania! <laughs> Every day of our lives, we try not to die. Life is dangerous, and we are fragile. Be careful. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that don't know, it, know who we are, we are 16-time Guinness World Record holders, three-time Emmy Award winning. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the Orioles. I've known about viruses my entire life. From pneumonia to chicken pox to debilitating flus, you name it. If a virus thinks it can get the best of me, bring it on. Because if it can beat my mind, then so be it. I lose. But there is one virus which I and all of us should be very conscious of. It's not contracted by hugging people and cannot be killed by hand sanitizer. Every protective face mask in the world used at once can't begin to stop the spread. As a matter of fact, it encourages it. Not a million miles nor a billion years of social distancing could affect its contagious hijacking of our senses. 
its life force relies primarily on the notion of ignorance. It's fueled by inferiority, deception, arrogance, and greed. That virus is fear. Sometimes it takes shutting down the world to realize it was open all along. But when someone else tells you what you can or can't do, that's kind of like slavery. act. Fear is very real. It's a core trait of humanity and must be observed and factored into everything we do. But it doesn't have to be a limiting factor to our decisions and actions. Actually, stepping into fear and embracing it is one of the most emboldening things we can do. Acknowledge it, own it, and then ride it like the lightning rides the sky. Persevere and create no matter what the circumstances. So here we are. I keep doing you, you know? Yes. Oh, just the incredible view and vibe that's here with all these crazy costume characters and just the whole thing, man. I guess, like, continue to support performance artists. He needs togetherness. And to be a pioneer in, in this current social climate of separation, it's good to get everyone together safely with the masks in the spirit of performing. And this is what it's all about, supporting this, the performers. Yeah, I love the... Uh... I'm a big fan of the improvisational uh, jam band situation, and there's some good people up there right now. They're rolling out some awesome groups. You know, the Ohio Burn Unit has over 50 members in it, and with COVID happening this year, we didn't get to see anybody. And you know, it's like our second family. You know, we really missed each other. So not only did this give us an opportunity to express ourselves artistically, but it gave us the opportunity to all come together as a family again. Now, I haven't seen any of these people in almost a year, so I, I really love this. This event, and a big shout out to the team that's come together to put this wonderful, wonderful event together bringing together all these awesome performers. I mean, this is awesome. Being in 2020, being safe, being social distanced, everyone's wearing a mask, it's been great. I mean, just wake up like you want to live and how you want to breathe. So it's just like, take every step to the best ability of your life. My shout out goes to our cops here who've been not only genuinely super nice, respectful, and just overall I think awesome. Cool. They've taken care of everyone. So, and yeah. the food guys. Oh yeah, the food guys took care of the most. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, party's like tight. We, I there. like it. I'm having a good time. You know, like, this is really nice. I really like it. It's very uh, comfortable because it's like, it's not too, uh, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> It's not like a bunch of stuffy people, you know? Right, it's like right. people you can relate to, and you, right. it's like you just get to have a good time with everybody. Right, for sure. It's a bunch of creatives. Yes. If you're not first, you're last. <laughs> you're Ricky Bobby. Have fun, people. Get out and have fun. And vote. And vote. Vote. <laughs> so here we are at the end of the costume parade right back where it all started with the music. 
I think the thing people miss most from entertainers is being captivated. Often in life, we performers are emotionally starved ourselves. Here, we got to be emotional radiance. Remember us, for we are the voices of your imagination. This film is a message of love and support moving forward into the unknowns of this world. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do anything, ever. All we really own is our own time and space and body. Take the lead role in your own life, carve your own paths, and dance to the beat of your own drum. Take risks and own them. Change is an inevitable universal constant, and amidst it, we must always be ready to evolve. Greed, fear, COVID, ideas, racism, it's all contagious. We just need to respect our space, both inside and out, and make conscious decisions to take precautions to spread less fear and hate and exude more peace and love. A seven-year-old once said, if you want to love better, you should start with a friend that you hate. Key of D, DCG, only love. Here we go. All right. One, two, ready, go. Take your light, 
people that are next to you, including Bumblebee and Woo! lots of yeah, people, we're crying because what we're doing is speaking on behalf of the performance industry so the world understands that we are smart, we are safe, we are tired. We are crazy. crazy. We're alive. We are resilient. We will be heard. We will be seen. We will be felt. We all now, are felt. I step back as far as I can humanly step back to share something with you that I randomly discovered over the past 24 hours. And it affected my heart so deeply that I have to share it with everybody here right now. The day Martin Luther King was shot and murdered in cold blood, Bobby Kennedy stood on the back of a pickup truck and gave the following impromptu speech. 62 days later, he was also shot and killed. In this difficult day, in this difficult time for the United States, it's perhaps well to ask what kind of a nation we are and what direction we want to move in. Or we can make an effort, as Martin Luther King did, to understand and to comprehend and replace that violence, that stain of bloodshed that is spread across our land with an effort to understand and compassion and love. My favorite poem, my, my favorite poet was Aeschylus. He once wrote, even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own day despair against our will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. What we need in the United States is not division, what we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness, but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. Feeling of justice toward those who still suffer within our country, whether they be white or whether they be black. We can do well in this country. We will have difficult times. We've had difficult times in the past, but we will, and we will have difficult times in the future. It is not the end of violence. It is not the end of lawlessness, and it's not the end of disorder. But we have to make an effort in the United States. We have to make an effort to understand, to get beyond or go beyond these rather difficult times. 
rededicate ourselves to what the Greeks wrote so many years ago, to tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. Let us dedicate ourselves to that and say a prayer for our country and for our people. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.